When you want to use sprites in Unreal Engine with Paper 2D or Paper ZD, the first step is to import them into your project. In this video, I'll show you all the different methods of importing we can use and talk about best practices and ways to improve your workflow with sprites. Since this video will mostly cover theory, you don't really have to follow step by step, but if you want to get some practice in, I'll leave a link to the asset pack I'm using in the description. Sprites and sprite sheets will usually come as a PNG file since it's a lossless format. JPEG and many other formats are lossy, so they will mess up your sprites and that's especially noticeable with pixel art. The most basic way of importing a sprite, sprite sheet or tile map is to open up your content drawer by clicking here or pressing Ctrl plus space. And then dragging and dropping the PNG file into it. This method will probably work for 98% of you who are watching this and you should now see a texture asset here. The content drawer can be a bit annoying sometimes and just closes when you want to drag an asset into it, but to prevent that you can click on Dock in Layout. If you're having issues importing PNG files, there are a few things you can try. Instead of dragging and dropping, you can use the Import button on the top left and navigate to the file on your system. It's also possible that the image file somehow got corrupted. An easy way to fix that would be to open it up in an image editing software of your choice and just export it as PNG again. This should fix any issues with corrupt headers and you can then try importing it into Unreal Engine again. If that also doesn't work, it's likely that the issues are related to your operating system. According to this forum post, it seems that opening up Unreal Engine with admin permissions could be one of the causes. Okay, so once we have the texture asset in our content drawer, the first thing we want to do is right click it, go to Sprite Actions and apply Paper 2D Texture Settings. Textures can be used for many different things in Unreal Engine and the ideal setting will differ per use case. What this does is apply the best settings for usage with Paper 2D and Paper ZD. If you double click on the texture asset, you can see all the different settings and make more adjustments to them if you'd like. When working with pixel art, the most important setting is the texture filter. Bilinear and trilinear can make your textures look blurry, while nearest is the correct one to use. But since we used apply paper 2D texture settings here, the default from texture group should be the same as nearest. By the way, I finished creating all 10 episodes of the Paper 2D Basic series. And you can get instant access to all of them right now on Patreon through the $6 tier. Of course everybody on YouTube will get access to these videos over the next couple of months, but joining the Patreon is a great way to support the channel and will give you a head start with your 2D game development. With the $12 tier you can also get early access to all my other videos and you'll get your hands on the Paper 2D Cheat Sheet, which has many useful resources about making 2D games in Unreal Engine that will save you a lot of time. At this point we still just have textures, so we can't drag them into the level or use them in blueprints. We first need to convert them to sprites. Just right click the texture, go to Sprite Actions and create Sprite. Sprites can simply be dragged into the map and this is something you might do for your background art or small decorative objects. Often though you want to use sprites with a blueprint to give them functionality, like I did for this one-way platform. There are a few settings on our sprites we might want to tweak. Pixels per unit is a very important one. This determines how big our sprites are in relation to Unreal Engine units. One Unreal Engine unit is 1 cm, so that means a 32 by 32 sprite like this will be 32 cm high and wide, which is quite small. This starts to become very important once we create characters that use the character movement component. Because many things related to movement assume your character is of a reasonable height and having very small characters can cause bugs. However, since there is a lot to talk about when it comes to characters, I will dedicate a separate video of this series to that topic. The value I generally use for pixel per unit is 0.25. This will basically make your sprites 4 times as big, meaning our 32cm sprite is now 1m and 28cm. Another important setting is pivot mode. This will allow you to set the pivot point for your sprite. By default this is center center, however there are many cases where you'd want to use bottom center instead. For example when applying a squash and stretch effect like I created in this video. However, when you want to spin your sprite, you need to set the pivot point to the center. Depending on how you made your sprites, this could be center center, however you might need to set it to custom and find the proper pivot point yourself. In many cases, you want to update the settings of multiple sprites at once. You can select multiple assets at once if you hold the control key while left clicking them. Then right click on one of them, go to asset actions and click bulk edit via property matrix. 
The pixel per unit setting is generally something you want to keep the same for all of your sprites to keep a consistent pixel size. We can just write 0.25 here now to apply to all of the assets. Press enter and save. It would be quite annoying though if we had to set this each and every time we create a new sprite. There's actually a way to change the default import settings. Click on edit, project settings. Scroll down to editor, paper 2D import. The first thing you want to do here is set the default pixel per unreal unit setting to 0.25 like we did before. This will then automatically be applied to all new sprites we create from here on out. The normal map texture suffix and base map texture suffix are important if you work with normal maps. You can learn more about that from an edge lighting tutorial. Other than that, you might want to change the default material if you created a custom one. Sprite materials are also something we'll talk about more in a future episode. In this episode, we only covered sprites and haven't really talked about sprite sheets, so you're probably wondering how we're gonna handle animations. Well, you can actually make simple games without relying on animations at all. I created the Kirby Quick Draw minigame in Unreal Engine 5 only using sprites and switching between the frames when necessary. However, once you make more complex games, sprite sheets will be extremely helpful and that's what we'll cover in the next episode. I hope this gave you an overview of how to properly import sprites and how to improve your workflow. As always, thanks to my patrons for making this tutorial series possible.